Yes, it's something different. Um, it's sail away, uh, as you can see. Um, and literally, I've just fired the game up. Um, and they've got no idea what I'm doing or where I'm going because um, it's literally an introduction to the game. So we've done land, we've done air, uh, we've done rails. It's time to take to the water. So grab that life raft and let's go. So hi there, Steve here, and welcome to Sail Away, the sailing simulator. Uh, literally, as I said, as all I've done is put in an email address and this, and tweak the options to get it to nice and full screen. And this is where I've ended up. So welcome to Sail Away. Thank you for taking this brief introduction tour. Click next to check out what you can do with Sail Away. Steering. You can steer and operate. Oh my God! You can steer and operate the boat like you would do a real sailboat. To steer, click the steering wheel with the mouse. Hold down the mouse button down and drag it to left or right. You can also use the A and D keys. I think I'll choose the A and D keys personally. So, so we turn it, and then we come. Okay, that way. So that's central. Oh my good God! Look at the waves. Okay, I get that. Look around. You look around by clicking somewhere on the empty space on the screen and drag the mouse left or right and hold down the mouse button. Okay, so I can look... Oh my good God. Uh, I can look all the way round, I'm guessing. Wow, doesn't that look good? Uh, yeah, okay, well the mouse is inverted, so I'll get used to that. Okay, yep. Yeah move around to move to different positions on the boat you can either click the blue circle uh, that light up when you move your mouse uh, okay so I can go over there okay so I'm guessing I look around and go back to where I was there or use a page up page down or use a button in the bottom right corner I takes me back to the steering thing. That takes me. That toggles through the places I can be. Okay. Oh, I don't want to be out there. Or there. I don't think. Don't want to. No, I'm a long way to the controls. Uh, I don't want to be off the boat. Okay, we'll stay back here. Uh, adjust the lines. To adjust sails, you can click a rope called a line uh, and then pull or ease it with the mouse. But in this tutorial, your skills level set to beginner. Yeah, that's probably a wise thing. Uh, and all you can do is steer. Yep. Skill levels. Uh, if you want to change the skill level, you can do it through the main menu, top right button, or escape, and then options. Now, I think I'll stick with beginner for now. Thank you. Activities. Also in the main menu, right top button, you can find other tutorials, accept a challenge, join a race, or accept an invitation from someone to sail together. Now, this is the one thing with this game I have read that there is multiplayer. Um, so you can actually go on a sail together and from what I've read the scaling is one to one I could be wrong but I actually read that if you wanted to sail across the Atlantic for example from the UK uh, it would take you a long time so yeah I, I really like the idea of that Thank you. Don't forget to check out the other tutorials on the main menu activities on tutorials. Do you want to start the next tutorial steering a boat? Yes, please. Okay. Becoming a helmsman. As a helmsman, you need to know a few basic things before you start turning that wheel. Lucky for you, this is fairly easy to learn. Yeah, I like the idea of that. When you turn the steering wheel, the boat does not respond immediately. It's because the boat is big and heavy. It responds with a delay. Try it if you want. So yeah, so I turn, I turn, I turn. And then it turns. So where's my head? Oh, my heading's up there, isn't it? Land ahoy! Okay. Oh my good god. I've got used to being on 
on the side all the time. That's going to be fun. Hang on while the boat turns against the wind. Okay. You can't sail straight against the wind. The sails are flapping back and forth. The boat lies dead in the water. The rudder hardly works because you have no speed. This is called in irons. Okay, so TWA zero is what I'm looking for. So I'm looking for the wind coming. I like the way the waves are mapped. When the boat has no speed, there is no pressure on the rudder and the boat will steer very slow. You need forward speed to be able to steer properly. Uh, oh, TWA's true wind angle. Okay, you can recognise when a boat is in the irons, the front bow is pointing towards the wind. The angle to the wind is around 0 degrees, which is up here then. The TWA is zero. This angle is called the true wind angle or shortened TWA. See if you can find the value for the TWA. Well, it's zero, isn't it? Upwind 1. Try and steer the boat to the right away from the wind until the TWA is about 45 degrees. Okay. So we're going to go a bit right. Oh, I see. So as we're turning now, TWA is increasing. 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 42. So let's bring it back. Okay, so at 49, and back a little tiny bit, and we're moving. Okay, you're now sailing upwind. Most boats will start moving forward at a TWA of about 40 to 45 degrees. Now try and steer the boat further away from the wind using a TWA somewhere between 90 and 150 degrees. Blimey. Okay, so I keep turning. So in the wind to be behind me, that's not what I want really, is it? I don't think. You are now sailing on a reach. The wind is coming from your side. Uh, this is when a boat will sail fastest. Okay. Click next to watch how the boat steers further until the TWA is almost 180 degrees. Okay, you're now sailing downwind. The wind is coming from behind you. Funnily enough, this is where most boats sail the slowest. Well, I wouldn't have thought that. Uh, click next to find out what happens when we steer the boat just a little bit further. Bam! The wind was called a jib. Jibe. Uh, we steered a little bit too far downwind and suddenly the sail flipped over to the other side. This is when serious accidents can happen on a boat. If the wind is strong enough, you may even break the mast, I see, as the jib comes around. Okay. When you're on a sailboat, always watch out for a jibe. And if you're behind the wheel, keep a good eye on the wind angle and never let it go beyond 180 degrees. Better keep a little margin. Click next to see how we complete the, cir complete the circle. So we'll go all the way around now. So the wind's now over on our starboard side. I'm guessing starboard's right, isn't it? Back on a reaching course, the wind blows sideways. So from either side, it doesn't matter then where the wind's coming from. I am a completely novice sailor. Watch out the boat steers further to the right until it sails upwind again. So you really want the wind coming at you from either the front at 45 degrees then or the back at 90 to 160. The boat is sailing upwind again. Now I'm trying to steer further against the wind and keep on turning until the sail upwind 45 degrees with a sail on the other side. Um, so I've got to keep sailing right then. So you're going to ask about 45 degrees.
tacking. Congratulations, you've made your first tack. Tacking is when you steer up against the wind until the wind comes from the other side of the boat. Tacking is the opposite of jibbing. Okay. This is how boats can sail against the wind. They sail upwind for a while, then tack and sail upwind some more. So that's why they get they zigzag, don't they? Well done. You now do the most important things about steering a boat. The courses, upwind, reach, downwind. The manoeuvres, jibbing and tacking. Do you want to start the next tutorial? Sail types, and why not? Okay, how much sail? As the wind increases, you typically need less sail. Strong wind, small sails, light wind, big sails, to make the most of the wind, I'm guessing. Let's go through this from a feeble breeze to a mighty storm. Okay, mainsail and genoa. The wind is light, the mainsail and the genoa are raised. A genoa is a big foresail that extends beyond the mast blue in the picture. That one. The wind has increased a bit and the boat heels over more than we want it to. Not only is this uncomfortable, excessive, uh, uncomfortable, excessive heel slows the boat down and makes it harder to steer. To reduce the sail area a bit, we set the first reef. In sail a whale, all we need to do is pull the line called main reef one to 100%. The main sail will become a bit smaller, and the boat will have less heel. Steer easier, steer easier, and may even sail faster. Okay. Jib. Now the wind is even stronger. We need a small foresail as well. The jib, green in the picture. Uh, that one then. We remove the Genoa by furling it up against and raise the jib with the jib halyard. Okay. Wow. The wind has gotten stronger yet. It has become time for reef number two. The mainsail is smaller now, but still isn't enough. We have one more reef to go. Reef number three. Wow, that's rough. NR4. All we can, Jesus, all we can do now is reduce the sail area now, is lower the jib. Some boats have an even smaller foresail called the number four, red in the picture, that one. Unfortunately, we don't have one. Well, why not? Uh, so we'll do without a foresail in this wind. Wow. And Jenica. There is one special foresail that we left out so far, the Jenica. It's a big round sail that is used when the wind blows from behind. One last time, the four sails from big to small. Jenica, Genoa, Jib and number four. Hope this all made sense and that you'll have fun experimenting with these sails. That sounds complicated to me. Uh, planning voyages. Yep, we're going to the next tutorial then. Blimey, this is going to be one of those, isn't it? There's going to be a lot to learn. Okay, you can set up a voyage with waypoints to guide your boat. The current voyage always exists on the map and is shown by a yellow line. Let's set up a... what? Let's set up a new voyage from Casablanca to New York City. That's a bit of a sail, I think, for a beginner. You can see on the map that we've placed a voyage start triangle for you at Casablanca. So drag the voyage end square until you reach New York City. Uh, here I'm guessing. No, oh, up there then. Okay. Need to zoom out. Okay, which is completely the wrong way to me, but okay. If I'm not drag them, I was I can drag them out. Uh, New York City is uh, how was New York oh, down there? Uh, in there, in there. Great, you now have a voyage that starts at Casablanca and ends at New York City. Now, so you want to pop into somewhere else on the way, and you'll need to add a waypoint to your voyage. To add a waypoint, drag a waypoint circle from the yellow voyage line and put it where you'd like. What about the Canary Islands? Oh, that'd be lovely. I like the Canaries. 
so if we zoom in on the canaries zoom's the wrong way around which are here somewhere aren't they um, there they are so if I, if I zoom out a bit and drag a line then Drag a waypoint, drag a waypoint circle from the yellow voyage line. I can't do that. How do I do that? So drag a waypoint. Oh, I see. There it is. Okay. Down to the Canaries. Okay. To delete a waypoint, just drag it back to where the voyage is straight again. The waypoint will delete itself. Okay. Guessing I've got to do that, have I? There we go. That's voyage is done. Voyage is done. Let's now look at navigate. That seemed far too simple. Teleporting. Uh, it seems a bit cheaty. First, let's teleport to the start of our voyage at Casablanca. Click on the map near Casablanca Casablanca, to set your teleport location. Notice the aeroplane appears. Um, and press the teleport button to drop your boat there. I ran aground. <laughs> I went a bit too far inland. Okay. Well done. As you sail along a voyage, the waypoints will turn from hollow to field in to show how you've come. Your GPS will point to the next uncompleted hollow waypoint on your voyage. There are a few useful tools in the navigation menu at the top of the screen that will help you follow a voyage. First, set your boat to follow the current compass heading. This is useful for sailing to a specific place, but the wind may change and not suit your current trim settings. Maintain wind angle. The second sets your boat to maintain the current angle to the wind. This is useful to maintain your trim settings, but may cause you to move off course. The third is your boat to automatically follow the voyage you've set out. This will only work when you're offline and maybe banned in some challenges and races. Yeah, I can understand that. The final button weighs anchor. Note that it's automatically turned your boat to the wind, so it's easier to put your sails back up. You can only raise your main sail when facing into the wind. Okay. That's your tutorial finished. Happy sailing. Tip, you can invite other sailors to join you on your voyage. Just use the invite menu in the top left-hand corner. Do you want to start the next tutorial? Naming of lines. We may as well work through the tutorials. Naming of sails. It is assumed that in this tutorial that you already know the names of the various sails. If not, best run the sail types tutorial first. Also, don't worry about the purpose of some of the lines yet. We will cover that in another tutorial. Everything starts with the line that is used to rail the sail, the halyard. It runs through a block in the top of the mast and up there. Uh, it runs through a block on top of the mast and pulls the sail up. Since the boat often has more than one sail, it also has more than one halyard. Okay. Genoa furler. I had one of them once. Often a genoa can be rolled up at the front. Uh, in that case, there is a line that can be used to wind and unwind it. This is called the genoa furl. Makes sense and sheet if we simply raise the sail with the halyard they would uselessly wave like a flag so there's an extra line that pulls the sail towards the center of the boat this is called the sheet uh, the sheet is the most important line you adjust it very often to match the angle of the sail to the wind that pulls it taut i suppose Outhaul. The bottom of the mainsail is attached to the boom. 
well, being attached to something is good. There is a line that pulls this bottom of the sail tight towards the back of the boom. This is called the outhaul. A vang? They're making up words now, aren't they? From the bottom of the mast to the boom runs a diagonal line that pulls the boom down. This is called the vang. The I'll never remember all these. The Cunningham, the mainsail, often has a line that pulls the bottom corner near the mast downwards. This is called the Cunningham. The trap of oh, flipping it. The traveller. The point where the main sheet block is mounted on the boat often runs on a rail. The car on the car? The car on this rail can be pulled towards the wind side of the boat. This line is indicated as traveller. Lead car. The Genoa sheet or jib sheet runs from a sail to the point on the boat. This point is again attached to a rail and can be moved forward or backward. This line is indicated as Genoa lead car or jib lead car. Backstay. The final line we discuss runs from the mast down to the back of the boat. I'm not going to remember all those. How sails work. Early sails, right. Early sails used to be square cloths that tried to catch the wind, but these sails only work when the wind direction blows in the right direction. I get that. Modern sails, um, sail technology has come a long way since then, as have sail materials. The image below is of a sail viewed from above. No, it's curved. Um, modern sails work much like an aeroplane wing. They bend... Whoa, the airflow shown in the image in blue. Okay. Force. This creates a force that tries to push the sail. So, negative, um, low pressure and high pressure thing. Unfortunately, the direction of the force is not the same as the direction of the boat. It pushes the boat forward, but also sideways. This sideways motion is called drift. We want to move forward and not sideways so the boat is shaped in such a way that it easily moves forward but pushing it sideways is a lot harder. A modern boat can easily sail up to 40 to 45 degrees against the wind because the sideways component of the force in the sail is compensated as much as possible and the forward component remains. Uh, that's all we hope it makes sense happy sailing. I am confused. Okay. If you've ever rode a bicycle and wondered why you hardly ever have the wind in your back, this tutorial is for you. Because you're riding, the wind's coming, because you're correct. I, yeah. It's a beautiful day with no wind at all. The boat is dead in the water. That's it. I'm done. I'm happy. Just leave me here. That's fine. Where's the outboard? Put the Put the outboard on. And I'll just go over over there. I must say, this thing does look pretty good, doesn't it? The water effects are oh, pretty. The mouse is backwards, but apart from that. We don't have an engine. Oh, but let's suppose the boat would have one. You start the engine, the boat starts moving forward with respect to the sea and the air. Yeah. Standing on the boat, this would feel like wind, even though there is no real wind. Appears there is many of the self-created wind is called the apparent wind. The speed of the apparent wind is in this case equal to the speed of the boat. Yes, I get that. Oh. The wind has picked up and is coming from the side of the boat at 90 degrees. The true wind direction is 90 degrees and the true wind speed is 10 knots. You can check it in the navigation window. Uh, true wind speed there, 10 knots. Where... True wind direction is 90 degrees. How do I know that? Surely there'd be something telling me which way the wind's coming from, wouldn't there? Or oh, is it that relative to my... No, I'm heading zero, so the wind's coming from this direction, but how do I know that? That's the bit I don't get. How do I know which way the wind's coming from? True wind direction. So it should be looking for a TWD. When the boat starts moving, it produces its own wind again. But this wind is added to the true wind, which is coming from the side. Together they form a wind that seems to come slightly more from up front. 
Check it navigation window. Do you see the second needle? So these two. Here then. Oh, does that show the wind? Ah, okay. So I don't know. That's 30 degrees. True wind angle. Apparent wind angle. Apparent wind speed. True wind speed. Okay. The true wind direction is still 90 degrees, but the apparent wind direction is about 50 degrees. I don't get where it's getting that 50 degrees from. Now check what's happened to the wind speed. The true wind speed is still 10 knots. Well, 9. But the apparent wind speed seems to be 12 knots. No, it's 6. Uh, whatever we do. The apparent wind speed is the wind we feel on our face and it also is, is also the wind the sails will experience. This is why some superboats can sail faster than the true wind because because they don't sail on true wind. They sail on the apparent wind. The faster they sail, the stronger the apparent wind. I get that. So the apparent wind direction changes gradually the faster we go. But when the boat speed is zero, the apparent wind direction is equal to the true wind direction because we're not creating our own wind. I get that. This means that the person who controls the angle of the sails to match the apparent wind has an important task. The sheets have to be pulled gradually as the boat picks up speed and the angle of the apparent wind changes. Let's watch how this works. First the boat needs to slow down. One moment please. Okay so slowing down so speeds up here 3.3 knots. I think this game could be really, really good. I said, if the map is a true one-to-one -one and I can get to grips with this, I like the idea of doing um, some sailing, you know, starting in the UK, maybe heading, you know, first to fall from Portsmouth, um, which is the closest sort of decent body of water to where I am, and maybe just sail across to the Isle of Wight, if it'll let me do that. And then maybe try and tackle heading to um, the Channel Islands or something. That could be quite good. I'm guessing for now it's just this one boat, which is enough, I think. So you've all these different lines here, look. Um, but I do like the way it's... So if we're out here, where are we? Look at the zoom in on us. So we're somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic. Um, yeah, apologies for that pop up there in Steam. So what island is that over there then? We're not slowing down, are we? Let's see if I can slow it down for us then. The okay, first boat needs to slow down. Well, I'm slowing down. Let's, let's just try and turn ourselves into the wind. The boat doesn't move much anymore and the AWD is roughly at 90 degrees again. Yeah, I get that. Now watch how the sheet is gradually pulled while the boat picks up speed and the AWA changes. So the sheet's getting tighter as we suddenly build up speed. Yeah, I get that as well. And that's it. That makes all made some sense. Uh, boat is in irons pointing against the wind trying to steer the boat away from the wind you have 1922 miles to go on your voyage uh, 
Okay. Well, that's due to tutorials over. What we'll do is we'll go back to the main menu. Um, wow, we've got different boats. So we've got the 38 foot ocean cruiser, the mini transat, and the Caribbean Rose. What the hell's. Wow. That's pretty cool. Activities, tutorials, challenges, races, and open invitations. Uh, options, gameplay, video, audio, and account. Uh, resume. So, menu here we've got select a user. So that's the people playing the game. That's quite cool. Look, there's all the people playing the game and where they are in the game. That's pretty cool. I like that. Um, I think we want to take a screenshot there. Okay, we'll go back to the main menu. So there we go then. A quick, uh, slightly long first look at Sail Away. Uh, I do really like the idea of that. Um, I will carry on with this. Uh, I'll try and uh, do some offline gaming and so I can get the hang of it. Or maybe just jump straight in there and, as I said, try and go from uh, Portsmouth, where I am uh, in the UK, across to the Isle of Wight, which is just south of the UK. And then maybe we'll try and head across to the Channel Islands. Um, yeah, I think that could be a lot of fun. At least we can't die in a fireball like we can in Flight Sim. Um, yeah, I really like the idea of that. So we'll come back to this. We'll check this out. I said this sort of game um, will be on the channel at the weekend now, Saturday or Sunday. Uh, something new and something we'll come back to from time to time. Regular content from me on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday from Omzi and Firmbus. Do please check out the uh, Google Plus page. I'll put a link to that in the description below. I really, really like this game. Uh, I think it's going to be one of those that's going to be quite tough to learn, but it's going to be quite rewarding. And I think even doing some racing and stuff in the future could be a lot of fun. So there we go. Until the next time then, if you have been, thanks very, very much for watching.